Wait, so uh, the the GM and the players got into an argument over who would win in a fight, Deathwing versus Smaug, and the t- chairs got thrown, a lot of shouting was had, doors were slammed, the DM left his books, but he already went home, Justin's canceled, my money's on Deathwing. If your money isn't on Deathwing, actually, right, pause, pause, pause. Yeah, uh-huh, 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 if uh-huh. your money's actually not on Deathwing, you're a fucking clown. <laughs> Like, straight up, there's well, no universe where Smaug, the Fire Drake, the smallest dragon in fucking history for Lord of the Rings, is taking on the Great Calamity Deathwing. I don't think Smaug is that much... I, I think they're about the same size. They are, but but Smaug got smacked by a random goober that's true. in a bow. He did. He did, yes. I mean... Deathwing I d- immolated countries uh, he did do that yes <laughs> he yes that is that is an accurate statement <laughs> uh but is uh uh welcome welcome back everyone we return excuse me to sessions canceled i am here i am josh isaiah is also here what's popping and uh as may have been evident by the by the intro and whatever the hell I put on the title, we're talking about fucking dragons. Because goddamn, as we established, dragons are in fact cooler than dungeons. Ergo, they are the more important half of Dungeons and Dragons. Correct. And if you disagree, that's fine. You can be wrong. I mean, yeah, you're allowed to be wrong. Uh, you know... I feel I need to... Well, actually, before... Well, actually, no. First, first, first. Before the before the before. Everybody take a moment. Maybe have a little sip of water, you know? Tell your cat you love it or whatever. If I can call, call grandma. And then hit follow or subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're currently listening on. Now. That's called a segue, baby. Yeah, exactly. Bada bing! Ah! Vroom vroom! Didn't the guy who made the segue like drive off a cliff or something on a segue? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's so dour, but I kind of hope so. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's one of those things I've heard, but I don't know if it's actually like true or anything. And I just, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I'll be thinking about that all fucking episode now i mean yeah you know i mean if if you have a moment not if you're driving obviously but if you have a moment maybe look up the guy who invented the segue i don't know maybe there's a story there or maybe not uh so uh, why are we talking about dragons i mean besides the fact that they're they're just they're just fucking cool i don't know what other reason i need i do have other reasons though Mm -hmm. uh so i saw i saw this is gonna sound very goofy to anyone listening but stay with me here I saw an Instagram reel recently that was, you know, it was a guy making the funny ha-has and he was like, there's basically two kinds of high fantasy. The first one being, oh, the world was both full of much more magic and there were dragons around. I wonder where the dragons have gone. And the other version of high fantasy, what do we do about all these fucking dragons? There's so many fucking dragons. (laughs) Uh, And this, this gave me a good guffaw. A good haha, a hee hee, a hoo, if you will. But then for a moment I thought about it. And I was like, wait. The idea of grading fantasy on where'd all the dragons go or why is there so many dragons is like actually kind of a, an accurate and legitimate uh, metric you could use about things. And then that got me thinking about just dragons in general and how dragons are handled in tabletop and D&D and so on and so forth and then Wizards of the Coast was like hey we're redesigning all the dragons in D- in 5e we're, we're giving them new looks uh, so I was like whoa everything's lining up so beautiful and then they've also shown us the new player's handbook cover which has a big gold dragon on the front big a big noodly boy so a big noodly boy all those things sort of mashing into one big thing uh, made me want to talk about dragons. But before we get to the dragons specifically, just because I want to talk about it a little bit, um, the 2024, for those who aren't aware, but I know probably everyone is, but just for the refresher, the 2024 
The D&D 2024 Rules Refresh books are coming out soon. When's the player's handbook coming out again? God damn it. I can never. It's in one. It's in the notes for. Is it in September? I want to say it's in September. Yeah, pretty sure it's September. That sounds right. Point is, the player's handbook is coming out relatively soon and then it will be followed by the monster manual and then the no sorry then it'll be followed by the dmg and then the monster manual uh which by the way side note i'm just gonna throw this one out here i said five ever ago that the uh that these books weren't gonna make it out in 2024 that they were probably gonna get pushed to 2025 and technically only the monster manual is releasing in 2025, but I'm going to count that as a W. I'm going to count that <laughs> as technically right. I'm going to count that as me. Right. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I'm going to count that as me being technically correct because I was. Uh, so anyway, so because the books are coming out really soon, we got to see the covers so far. So we've seen the player's handbook cover and literally Today, as of recording, which is to say uh, May 28th, the DMG cover just got posted on the artist's Instagram. So we have seen we have the DMG cover and the uh, the player's handbook cover. And so before we get into dragons, I just want to talk about the covers Um, because I don't know about you, but. I'm fucking loving these covers. So about them. Very into it. The covers are fucking sick for sure. Yeah, They're I know. So like, good. I really love um, Wiley Beckert's art. Yes. He's awesome. The Toshin's she, Cauldron cover art fucks so hard. Uh, so Wiley, Wiley Beckert's a lady. Is it? Oh, my bad. I'm pretty sure. I, I think I, so. Okay, to be fair, this, this might be like, all right, Isaiah, this is some cap. Did not actually look up this person's like face. It's like when you know what a voice actor looks like, but you have uh, what they sound like, but you have no idea how they look. That, yes, I mean that's that's fair. I'm pretty sure a lady. Now I'm do- now I'm not sure. Yeah, hold on. No, 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 Pause. it's a lady. Okay, I found her Instagram. Lady, <laughs> I found her. I found her. Um, yeah. So, yes, that's the alternate cover. Bef- before I want to do the alternate cover last, though. So, um, the. I really like so the so I will I will for those listening I will put the I will put all the links to everything I'm referencing in the description so you may look um, the player's handbook cover to sort of really briefly describe it is like five very colorful looking D and D heroes you got like a paladin and a wizard and maybe like a rogue and like a dwarf warrior and like a maid sorcerer lady or a cleric lady in the background there and they're all like squaring up and they got they got some kobolds and a red dragon coming after them and behind them is a big ass gold dragon and it looks dope as hell uh and it to me these i think the thing i really like about this cover well, first of all, I think this cover shows that uh, D&D has a much bigger budget this time around because this type of painting with more characters and more stuff going on and more complicated definitely costs more money. <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, it definitely took the artist longer. Um, and I don't know if, if you remember the old player's handbook was essentially just person and big fire giant. Yes. So... You know, well, a cover I do like was definitely a like less intensive cover to make for a professional artist. Um, But this one is, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. But the thing I really, really like about this, and I don't know if, if you picked up on this, but it's in it, it's in the, the DMG cover has this, too. They're really vibrant and saturated and colorful. Like way more than the previous covers. And I kind of love it. Did yeah, you- no, for sure. They are. Uh, I mean. So I, I, I said it in a previous episode where like uh, for me, the like super saturated look really has to be done well or I'm just like, yeah, but no, this is done perfectly. Like the blue for the paladins, like cloak in his tabard. Perfect. Like yeah. sparkly magic energy. Perfect gold dragons I, like I think the thing that I really like too is that the fantastic 
<laughs> the gold dragons, everything. I think the thing about the um, the palette and stuff that I really like is this feels like over the top, kick ass, like heroic fantasy stuff. Whereas the old player's handbook felt grungier, which is not necessarily bad, but I don't just don't think that's what D and D. At least that's not what Five E is. Like I shouldn't say D and D. Older editions have different vibes. Five E, I don't think is this like you know grungy dirt farmer thing because you know they they tried when when Five E first came out they tried to give this vibe of like oh we're going back to second edition right like Five E pulled a lot from second edition we're going with the vibes of second edition. And, uh, oh, wow, this is funny. This is this is a slight tangent, but I was just scrolling through the artist who did the cover, Tyler Jacobson's Instagram, and he did one of my favorite pieces of Elminster ever, too. LOL. Um, oh, which one? The the one where he's got, he looks, uh, the really saturated blue and red cloak where he looks like a bad, hold on, I'll send it to you. Um, but, yeah, so they were, like, oh, in the early. Oh, yeah, this one fucks. Yeah. In the early it's days like cool of 5e, sword. yeah, him and he, exactly. In the early days of 5e, you know, they were trying to be like, yeah, 5e, we're trying to go back to that 2e vibe. And it's like, oh, uh, you know, you're the dirt farmers and you're going from zero to hero. But like, I don't think 5e was ever really that. They kind of tried to do that, but I don't know if it was ever really that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they uh, speak of it like it is, but... Right, yeah. But the, the game doesn't play out. But, oh, wow, this artist also has one of my favorite Red Dragon pieces, and he made the Tiamat, the redesigned look for Tiamat when in Fizzbands. This guy's just fucking killing it. Um, and uh, it, so, yeah, I think the thing that I like about these new covers is they feel like they're just going whole hog. They were like, yes, superhero fantasy thing, like... Bada bing, explosions, Marvel, pretty colors, right? Like, I feel like they're just going in on that. Mm. Now, whether that was a conscious choice from Wizards and the art, like, or should I say, whether that was a conscious choice from the art directors at Wizards or the artists just kind of did that and they went with it, who's to say? But uh, I'm feeling it. I'm really feeling it. Um, also, now in it's that, Shulk time. <laughs> yes, it's Shulk time. Uh, also, in that article, there's a couple of other pieces of art that we've gotten of 2024. There's the back cover of the player's handbook, um, because this is going to be the books this time are not going to be full page wraps. They're actually going to be different piece of art on the back and the front. Uh, which I okay. thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's probably no, probably. No, it's not cheaper because no, I think it, it's actually it, not cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it would almost certainly be more expensive to commission two. Yeah different pieces of art that are likely the same price versus one. Yep. It's like two things worth $50 or one thing worth 75. Like basically. Yeah. Um, there's also some art at the very bottom, uh, of the article. We got a tiefling warlock and a wild magic sorcerer and like a port area and like a hilly farm and stuff. So there's a couple of other art pieces in that article too. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's super fun. And then the DMG cover. The DMG cover fucks so My boy. hard. He's back. <laughs> Which Better one? than ever. Which one? <laughs> My boy, Warduke. Warduke? Let's yeah. go! <laughs> yes. So for those who don't... Uh, I, again, uh, links in the description. Uh, it is... Venger from the D&D 80s cartoon standing on a big pedestal doing some magic shit and then war duke is in front with his big fiery sword commanding a bunch of skeletons i don't know who the lady character is though but there's yeah, another I, like i don't know either wizard I, lady I character to the left also from the DD cartoon is she yeah that makes me. sense yeah i got no idea yeah so we got we got war duke venger and she looks like a necromancer of some nature uh and yeah this cover just fucks so hard <laughs> Like, it's so good. It's such the, like, the 80s over-the-top badass m- m- energy is just uh, peak amazing. Also, Venger got a little bit of a redesign, which I appreciate. Oh, yeah, he looks a little less, like, yeah. He looks a little less 80s. He looks a little more like a modern take on that kind of a character. Uh, 
Yeah, I just I think the other thing that I really love about this, I think that the reason like, don't get me wrong, the Acerarak cover is great. But Acerarak sitting there like casting an evil spell, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's not bad. But three really prominent villains look like th- that look like they're about to go march and like beat some heroes ass just gives yeah, big sallying forth. Yeah, like big peak DMG like this is the vibe I want when I'm picking up my my Dungeon Master's guide. Like it really fills that like I don't know big big bad evil guy against the heroes. Like it just fits the vibe. And again, the saturation is way cranked up on this. The colors are much brighter. It's much more it's just like, I don't know, the vibe feels more over the top, which cuz let's be honest, 5e is over the top. <laughs> Like, it is, yes. I design. Maybe not in the old days, but these days 5e is over the top. Well, so you know, uh, what's, you know the really funny thing about 5e is that all of the material that comes out for 5e is not quite dirt farmer, but it's definitely like a more melancholy, down and dirty kind of thing. But the game doesn't play that way. Yeah. And a lot of the like outside material like the D&D movie do not feel that way. No, the D&D movie doesn't feel that way at all. Three different avenues. There's like D&D on paper, D&D as concept, D&D in practice. Yeah. Which is very funny because, yeah, you're right. The D&D movie in particular, which is, you know, the most recent thing that's obviously pulling, you know, from the game as it currently is, doesn't have dirt farmer vibes in the slightest. Not even remotely. Yeah. So, yeah, that's very true. Um, I will also, uh, I don't know if I said his name, but the before, but the artist is Tyler Jacobson. Uh, if you want to, anyone wants to go find his Instagram. He is the same artist who did the DMG and player's handbook for 2014. Same, same dude. Uh, which I think is kind of interesting and kind of fun that he got to like completely retackle it. And it looks like kind of looks like scrolling through his like Instagram and his pieces his vibe I think he oh he also did the Planescape cover um his uh his his sort of like color palette and vibe and stuff has shifted a bit over the over the years so the way more saturated like over the topness it, it sort of checks out oh he did the Wild Beyond the Witchlight cover too bro <laughs> let's go this fucking gay uh so yeah but yes, he did the old he did the old covers too, so it's kind of fun that he got to like retackle them. Uh, and then yeah, so the alternate cover we've only seen the alternate cover for the player's handbook, uh, and like as I said, it's Wiley Beckett who did the alt cover for Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which is the one where it's it, that's such a hard one to explain. It's Tasha pulling like swispy smoke out of like a cauldron thing and there's a golem or something behind her with like a weird mechanical heart and it all looks very historic book storybook comic booky kind of thing it's a really it's a very cool cover it's very hard to explain it (laughs) yeah like i'm looking at it trying to explain it and i'm not like (laughs) it's weird but it's super cool but if you've seen that alternate cover for tasha's culture of everything she is she did the alternate cover for the player's handbook and it's just it's four heroes just like chilling around a campfire making some actually not even a campfire they're making tea with the dragon's breath (laughs) as the big noodly once again just noticed that yeah yeah and the dragon's holding a cup of tea Look at his right, right front paw. Dragon's got a little cup of tea. He is correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> they're just hanging out with this big gold dra- dragon who's just like noodling around on the cover like like a big snack. And uh, it's 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 a good vibe. Some people I saw complaining that it's like way too chill of a vibe for a, like a D&D cover. And I like kind of, I guess, but also maybe that's why it's the alternate cover, you know? Also, like, have you ever played D anD D? Like, this is a this thing is, that happens. This is pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is. Where's the lie? Like, I agree, but I, I heard some people make that statement. I was like, hmm, interesting. Okay. Uh, but yeah, imagine being wrong. Very like into that. it. I'm gonna get so many people angry by you doing that today. 
Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, I kind of really want this alt cover player's handbook. A lie. But anyway. Not a bad choice, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> look, I made the joke a while ago, but inside me are two wolves. The one who hates D&D and the one who loves D&D. <laughs> it's a complicated, this is understandable, comrade. It's a con- complicated relationship. Uh, so yeah, that's all the new cover and art stuff. Um, and then in that same article, we're about to, we're going to talk about the dragons in the article where they showed off the new player's handbook. They also showed off the dragon redesigns, um, as well as there is one specifically dedicated to the gold dragon. And then the other one, other one shows red dragon and a bronze dragon. Um, I think those are the only ones we've seen thus far, as far as the dragons go. Um, yes. So let's let's get into down into it. As I established before, when we're talking about, well, I guess, I mean, uh, well, I guess actually we should talk about the dragon redesigns first. I guess probably right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we've right, seen. So I'm gonna get spicy real quick. Yeah. Okay. So just real quick, like I said, so the we've got the red, the bronze, and the gold. The red and the bronze are pretty in line. I would say the red dragon in particular just looks like a chunkier version of a red dragon. Like, you got beefed up. Homeboy's, like, on the muscle marinara, potentially. Um, And the bronze dragon has more of this, like, aquatic vibe going on. They got, like, fins around their ankles and more fins on the tail and their wings. Their wings kind of remind me of leaves, which is interesting. Um, and then we got the gold dragonborn, dragonborn, the gold dragon, not dragonborn, who is much more long, snaky, Chinese style gold dragon, uh, who, and apparently, uh, if you look back at the 1E and 2E art of the gold dragon, they actually used to look a lot more like the long, snaky Chinese style dragon, and they didn't have wings at all, actually, in 1 and 2 in what in first and second edition which i thought was interesting i didn't know about that until very recently or till today mm-hmm. actually i should say <laughs> not um i also i do like that this art that we're seeing also we got like top down shots of what the dragons look like and underbelly shots i think that's that's fun to see them at like a multiple angles uh and the gold dragon the wings are like they're almost not like big wings. They're like big fins along the sides that go the entire length of the body. And then from a top down perspective, the silhouette of the gold dragon looks like a sword, uh, which was intentional. Yeah, it basically like it's got uh, its wings look like a shark's pectoral fins. Yeah, actually, it, it just kind of looks like a shark, weirdly enough. It has a little bit a of kind a of sort of like a shark with yeah, a really kinda. thin, thin neck and a very a long, a long shark. <laughs> yeah, He's very long. I mean, personally, the silhouette game from the top down, I think the re- the red dragon gets the W because the red dragon looks like a big, scary bat. <laughs> from the top down yeah. view. Uh, but I do love the bronze. I think bronze looks super sick. Also, the art of the bronze doing the lightning breath that looks like a big laser beam. See, that's what that is what I have been saying about yep. lightning breath. Get yes. this little like easily fucking lightning bolt from that one book out of here. Oh, my God. yes. The um, the uh, uh, the new starter set. Yeah. The uh, yeah. What, dragon of ice fire peak or whatever. Yeah. That one. Was yeah. Rough. If it don't look like the atomic breath. Get it out of here. Yeah. All right, so you said you had a spicy take, so go ahead, unleash your spicy takes. So, let me start off by saying, I like the new art. Huh. However, um, however, <laughs> it doesn't feel D and D to me. The new dragon art. Why? It feels Game of Thrones. Interesting. Because like, they redesigned a lot of the dragons, and while they kept like their core features, right? Like the, the red dragons have the two big back swept devil looking horns. The actually anatomy of the dragons straight up just looks like the dragons from uh, from Game of Thrones, except they're not wyverns. Like they have arms and wings, not 
joined like wings. I like I I don't know like how to put it into words. It they just kind of all look No, someone said homogenized. I saw someone say that they they look homogenized. That's not it. Like I don't know how yeah, I don't know how else to put it other than they look like they came from Game of Thrones and that's cool. Game of Thrones designs are cool, but they for me fit a more grounded fiction whereas you know the the you know the gold dragon have like the big whisker predator tentacle things on its head felt more fantastical to me you know and the new uh new gold dragon has like a standard chinese long like the thin little like two whiskers whereas the the old the other 5e one has like these big catfish looking whiskers uh huh I don't know that I totally see the comparison. I like I don't I I, I don't know. I, I think my problem is that I felt like a lot of the at least among the base dragons. So when we're talking about we're talking about the metallics and the chromatics here. The Chris, you know, the 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 gem dragons and like the the space dragons and shit in in 5e. Those are those are their own thing. They have a different vibe. They look very distinct. Um, the time dragon. <laughs> but, uh, I feel like, I feel like the old 5e dragons all, I don't know, felt pretty, cl- like bronze and brass, for example, of the old designs look pretty similar to me. Um, some of them stand, like blue stands out a good amount, you know, like, yeah, I don't I don't know that I totally I don't know that I quite feel what you mean there. I th- I think I mean, well, maybe maybe it's just a well, body let's, let's shape. Put it this way. Well, so it's that but like it's they shrunk down a lot of the proportions, right? The horns are literally smaller than they used to be. They're more spines than they are like big imposing horns. Well, you'll we'll probably see this more with like the blue dragon, right? The blue dragon has the massive rhinoceros thing on the and for in front of his face, right? I mean, hopefully, I mean, I would I would assume that's not going anywhere. As you see, you would think, but if you look at the the red dragon's horns in Five E, they are you know not only do they they crest far farther down the head. They come back a lot. Like they're just more pronounced. They're different colors. Like so, I'm looking at the using origin- the word like, and I'm pissing myself off. I'm looking at. So I, I just pulled up the old picture of the the first five E Red Dragon Monster Manual. Um, they are more forward on the head, so that they they're more like big eyebrows. They start the crest starts like at the eyes, whereas the new design they start behind the eyes. Um, they're white as opposed to this like dark black we're getting with the new one but the new one has three horns it looks like kind of a small medium large thing going on but like i don't know honestly i forgot red dragons had those horns because this old the old 5e art i feel like the horns really blend in with their head and look like they're just part of the like head crest thingy rather than horns like, oh, interesting. I, 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 that, I, 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 I straight disagree. I like that's always the st- most striking thing on a red dragon's head is it's two massive devil horn. Um, I'm remember, sending you some art of what I uh, like the a comparison of what I mean when I say that they look kind of Game of Thrones like like. Yeah, the way they do the the like fin spine, like the spine fins or the dorsal fins, the overall proportion size. I think I don't know. I don't know. Is that like, you know, is that Game of Thrones or is that just kind of everybody comes to a similar vibe when you think about like dragons as big animals? You know, like I don't know. I, I will mean, say maybe like I I will say the art of the red dragon that's like flying through the air, which the one that Tyler Jacobson did. Uh, those horns are red. <laughs> You can't. You can barely see those horns. 
Yeah, uh, in that one, yes, they are harder to see. They're way harder to see on that one. I mean... They also I have, like, a... The older ones had a smaller neck. They have the, a they, bigger they body. A thick neck. I kind of like the big, thick neck. I like that big-ass neck. I feel like an animal like this needs to have a big, thick-ass neck. Uh, I, I, I can see what you're saying, but I, I don't know. I, like I said, they're cool. I just... They don't. They just don't feel D and D to me. That's pretty much where where the my argument kind of ends. They don't feel super big fantasy. They feel more realistic fantasy. I don't know. I don't know that. I, I yeah. I don't know that I feel that. Like, I don't feel like. The, I don't think there's anything about these that say they're not D. &D. I mean, they do. They feel a little more rounded, which sounds ridiculous to say about a dragon. Um. Maybe a little bit, but the thing about D and D is that D and D kind of treats its dragons, as we'll get to later. D and D kind of treats the dragons like animals, and that they exist in like a specific kind of environment, and they're adapted to a specific kind of thing. So, them feeling a little more grounded, like an animal, I think makes sense. Like, I know they're magical inherently, but they 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 feel they're they're treated as if you could sort of, you know, like the way they're explained is that you can study a dragon in in D and D or it's in the Forgotten Realms, I guess. So it's like. It feels weird. To try and high fantasy it up, I don't know, I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I feel that they're not D and D and strike me. I also think the new red dragon looks more intimidating. I don't know. I the so that art that you posted, the the one underneath the two comparisons, to me that thing is more intimidating than the new dragon. Well, that's one in flight, like burn and sh like that just burns shit up. Whereas the new one, we just have him kind of walking. I don't know. That's uh, kind of well. It, it's like yeah. the new dragon. It has a more like feline like big cat sort of musculature yeah it's it's got like a uh you know it's killing me that the words are failing me now like its tail is bigger and, and stockier it looks like it, it would just hit you harder if it punched you but if any of these things punched you you're going to turn into a pink mist but, but I, I feel like the red the the, uh, the older one just looks like it punchy harder i don't know i like that the new one feel, kind of feels like a big cat no, see, I don't. I don't think the new one feels like a big cat. For me, the new one feels like a big lizard. The old ones felt like big cats. The way that they like stood and walked, like for example, this looks like a cat mid trot. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. Kinda, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I think the. I, th I don't know that the new art. The new art we have. They have quite a like. At least the red dragon looks like he's kind of creeping along. I, I don't know. I think the new one looks more intimidating. I also like the use of way more black being implemented. I think the, the added, color's great. Yeah, I think the added black helps a lot. And the fact that the underbelly is like an ashy white as like like coal or ash from like a fireplace, I think is that's a fucking genius maneuver. It's just like a cool palette choice I will say the, looking at the bronze one again the, the wings the, I don't know what they're trying to do with the wings they feel odd feel a little odd they remind me of something like a sea turtles fins oh, you can maybe. clearly see that there were bones in there like those were hands at some point the shape makes me think of a big leaf <laughs> I could see that a big maple leaf, yeah, yeah. And then so wait, so the the problem with your problem with the gold one though is that the wings are not really wings per se. It's they're just too small. Like, oh my god, I keep saying the word like it's pissing me off. It, uh, it, if you read through, if you actually read through the article there, that was deliberate. It was. Yeah, I still don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Because you run into this issue where because the tail is so long and it gets so wide, the dragon feels really lopsided. 
its head is thinner than any point in its body other than its neck. Yeah. So you almost want to look at it backwards, but it's not backwards. It, I don't, the silhouette I, just kind of, not that it falls apart, but it doesn't read perfectly for me. The old gold dragons, which still had a really long tail that was flared at the end, is they had that massive Y shape, right? Like their their wings came to a massive crest. And that had like a really striking silhouette. I don't know. I, I did not like the look of the wings on the old gold design. Don't really? they No, nah, yeah, they look I don't know. They they just don't they feel weird. I just don't like the vibe because they're not quite wings, but they're kind of trying to be wings. I think I like that with the new gold dragon, they committed to the idea that the wings aren't even really wings per se. And they're more like a sort of like flying squirrel flaps or something like that. They're these like gliding things. And that really the dragon is just flying magically. You know, the wings aren't actually helping it fly in any fashion. Because and, and I suppose I, I liked that the, the old ones... They, they had this sort of kite wind riding effect. See, but I think they still have that. I feel like the that. new one won't have as much. I think it still has that. I it's, just, like, it's just a different look. It's like a different shape, but I think it still has that. And yeah. as for the, the silhouette being backwards, I don't think so. I think it makes sense. You don't? That the tail, no, I think it makes sense that the tail is like wider. Is there, the tail is going to be... It, it feels like a it feels like a streaming it feels like a um those those ironically it feels like those kites they use in like a Chinese festival that are like those big long ones the really long streamers yeah yeah I, I, it feels like one of those which I, I, I get what I, you're I saying I, like. I, I just feel like it's the proportions are off I I Isaiah hates everything new. That's what we're learning. I don't hate everything new. <laughs> I like I said, I like these designs a lot. They just don't feel D and D to me. But like, I don't you see. I don't understand that because like I don't think D and D has any one. I don't feel like D and D has any one holistic, hundred percent look to any of. No, I don't know that that's true. A lot of their monsters have a sort of storybook esque aesthetic to them. I think that's that's was it's obviously it, until they're done by like different artists and whatnot or the weird three D shit they did for that one hell book. Um, they have this sort of drawn in a storybook sort of aesthetic, and the new ones are not that. The new ones are are a photograph taken of the actual red dragon you know hell even that re more realistic shot the one that we keep going back to of it like destroying the building and flying away that still looks like it came from a storybook I don't think it does I don't really get where you're getting I, I don't, I don't I've never gotten that I, the only time I get the storybook impression is when they do specifically alternate styles that aren't because you know D&D &D stays within the uh, the the sort of realistic fa fantasy realm for the most part and I don't think that feels like a storybook thing the only time I feel like they venture into that realm is when they get into their more like fringe styles like the Tasha's uh, Tasha's Cauldron type cover that that kind of vibe I think is more in the storybook direction than anything Seriously, I, I I don't know. For example, the bullet. That thing makes no sense. Practically, well, the, the monsters making no sense and them being drawn in like a storybook style, I think are kind of two separate things. No, I, I no, I genuinely don't think they are right. It, they're they're sort of drawn in a style that no, it, it doesn't really make sense. But it's you know, it's a it's a it's a fantasy story. It doesn't need to. Right. This, but, is, this is I know this is a weird thing because I always go off about like I want more practicality in these things. But like high fantasy is where I don't want that. I want right, but the you're like talking Conan about, Barbarian loincloth. You're talking about their like designs and their vibe. You're not that's not necessarily about their art style as much because I don't think the art style invokes any kind of storybook. 
thing. Like it, the art style is is trending towards fantastical like realism. And if anything, the only reason they're feeling probably more like they're trending towards realism with the newer art, probably just because they have a bigger budget and they're paying, you know, more seasoned artists. But I don't think the style ever invoked like because storybook to me always implies more simplified art, like less detailed, not more detailed. Yeah, and, I think you can make a solid argument that the overall detail in the art for 5e is less quote unquote detailed, right? Rather than having the the you can clearly see thousands of scales on the new the newer red dragon. The old one has the the more plate like scales, which is sure on paper less detail, but it looks more fantastical. Sure, but that's just saying the new stuff looks more detailed com- in comparison to the old stuff. What I'm saying is I don't think the old stuff was ever like it is less detail, but I don't think it was ever lower detail. Like it was never like the old five the the old five E art was never minimal detail. They always still tried to have that realism bent to it. It's just that the newer stuff has even more. Like the old stuff was you know eighty percent, and the new stuff is ninety five percent. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like, think that we we've just pushed too far. Is what I'm saying. I agree with you. I don't think it was um, of lower quality, as in it was it was done by any worse of an artist. But the designs were simpler. I, I guess you could make an argument of pushing too far, maybe. I don't think that's particularly a necessarily bad, per se. Kind of depends. But also the idea of the dragons being drawn like like in a book as as like a scientific study. Like somebody put them in like a biology book. I kind of love that. That feels more fun than someone like as opposed to someone describing a red dragon and then someone kind of draws it like the newer ones almost feel like some guy actually studied like a red dragon in front of him, which I don't know how the fuck he managed that. But, you know, whatever <laughs> um, you can do both. Uh, you can have things like having, you know, that what the, the, the Draconomicon did where it showed their internal bodies and, and their organ structure, but it still had that it was drawn by someone look rather than a more photographic. One. I guess. I don't know. I think I think the more photographic work look kind of works when you're doing it. Eh. It, I, it might bother me for other types of monsters and stuff like, you know, I could like stuff that's particularly weird and out of place. Like it might bother me for ghosts and aberrations or something like that. But I think with the dragons, it makes sense. Like I think it will kind of depend because I could see I could see a drawing of like, you know, something that's inherently wacky woohoo nonsense like a like a beholder or something like that i could see a drawing of a beholder looking too realistic to the point where your brain's like not sure what to do with it i could get that but i think for the dragons it feels right to do that even though again obviously dragons aren't real but I guess it's I guess it's not <laughs> dragons aren't real, but like lizards are real, right? I guess I think that's what it is. We know lizards. And so making them feel more like lizards kind of works. So maybe that's it for me. I don't really look at dragons like they're lizards. And they are they're literally big lizards though. Uh, I mean it, technically for counting D D's lore, they're not lizards. They're dragons. There's a difference, sir. But, no, I know, I, but I'm not talking about D&D's lore. I, I'm talking about as human beings, when we design dragons, we base them on lizards because that's the closest thing we have in the real world to use as reference. Like, we use reptiles. You know, unless you're trying to specifically do something out of the standard. But, you know, you tell yes, you tell I, someone... I, I know what you mean. Yeah. You tell someone to gather reference for a dragon... They're going to get a bunch of pictures of pictures of crocodiles and iguanas and water, water dragons and Komodo dragons and shit like I mean, shit, the fact that we literally call lizards some lizards dragons. Yes, I just, just kind of a yeah, funny I, I 
to me, I, I never felt like a five a D and D dragon was a lizard. To me, it was a dragon, like a distinctive. It's a different thing. It might look similar, but, I, but they're I'm not, not saying in the same I'm way that saying, like reptiles and avians share uh, a a common ancestor. I'm not saying they're literally treated as lizard lore wise or anything. I'm just saying like visual language wise as human beings. Like disregarding the game as human beings, lizards are the point of reference we use for something like a dragon. You know? No, I do. I, I that's what I'm saying. I, I get exactly what you're saying. I, I but what what I keep saying is is design wise, even then, they still aren't lizards to me. Don't don't follow that logic, but okay. I, I I'm struggling to put it into words. But it's sort of like what I was saying, right? They feel like massive big cats with scales. I guess, but I I don't I think they still have some of that though. I don't think they've lost that. Well, maybe the gold dragon. The gold dragon absolutely has uh, the, the bronze and uh, the, the I, bronze I and red. I don't. Think I don't see it in them anymore. It's gone. Whatever that was, packed up and went home. <laughs> I think those haunches look like something you could kind of see on like a lion. Especially the way the red dragon's strutting. Because lizards don't. Lizards crawl with their stomach like close to the floor. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty up there. What, could what also else you got on this? Because we're also going <laughs> to talk about this for a million years. I feel like we're just going to go back and forth for three hours. I mean, uh, fair enough. Um, I think that was it about the dragon redesigns themselves. Yeah. Uh, so now, now the next part is just talking about dragons using them like in your games and how you interpret them and whatnot. Uh, so as we established five ever ago, uh, which is to say, you know, 40 minutes ago or so, uh, we got we got two broad categories of how you handle your dragons. And uh, I, I, I summarize these two categories as category one. Where all did dragons go? And then category two. Oh, God, why are there so many dragons? <laughs> uh, and those two broad categories, you can generally break down into like subcategories. And then, of course, if you want, I'm sure, as with many things in life, you can break the subcategories into subcategories into subcat. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to do two. We're going to do two, two, two levels, if you will. Um, we could get much more noodly, but we're not going to because ain't nobody got time for that. So a couple of examples of our of our two broad categories being broken down a little bit just to give some people some ideas about what the hell I'm talking about, because I may sound like a crazy person right now if without context here. Uh, so a couple examples of category one, which is where all the dragons go. A <laughs> uh, couple examples I've I thought of um, where dragons are handled as great, ancient, magical, powerful beings that are like not around anymore or very rare. Uh, a very classic example of this is Lord of the Rings. There's not very many dragons, we know who they are, and they're all, like, ancient and super magical and powerful. You know, more or less, Smog's kind of a bitch, but the rest of them are pretty powerful. <laughs> Smog, Smog goes down a little bit like a punk, but, you know. Eh, yeah. uh, another yeah. good Category 1 example. Uh, dragons used to be plentiful and very powerful, but only the strongest of them survived, and they're the only ones left. So there's not a ton of dragons left because only the good ones survived because of, you know, calamity or war or magic disease or whatever. Uh, a good example of this is Final Fantasy XIV, where fourteen might seem a little deceptive because if you look at fourteen from the outside as a layman, you're going to look at fourteen and go... What are you talking about, Josh? There's dragons everywhere in 14. How is how is how is Final Fantasy 14 an example of where did all the dragons go? Um, 14 is an example of where did dragons go because all of those dragony things you see in 14, basically none of them are actually dragons. Because the way it is in 14 is there's only a couple of actual dragons and they're called the first brood. 
Uh, and uh, they're, they're, they're literally aliens. Um, and the first brood are the only legitimate things you would call a dragon in the 14 universe. Everything else is like some sort of half-assed or like subcategory or like not a true. So you have like drakes and wyverns and like weird dragon people things and like much smaller dragon like creatures uh, and people will refer to all these different things as dragons but they're none of them are true dragons at 14 the only true dragons are the first brood and they're the ones that are named so we have and they're all named after you know famous actual mythological dragons so we have nidhog bracevelger vitra tiamat uh bahamut uh who else uh, I'm forgetting some of the first brood Midgar Somer and I mean there's like six or seven of them I forget how many but yeah uh, so 14's a uh, 14's one of those this one I thought was really funny I don't did you did you notice this uh, third bullet point I put down as a I mm. oh. I'm sorry yawning. I did yes <laughs> I originally put down for this one um, D&D Kinda. Uh, Because, you know, Bahamut and Tiamat. Uh, But then I remembered a better example. (laughs) So, another category one, where all the dragons go. Uh, Dragons are deities. They're just just god beings. They're just pure god beings. Um, A great example of this is Dragon Ball Z. (laughs) Which sounds like... We'll give you an an honorable mention. Oh? All of the gods in Fire Emblem are dragons. Okay. No, there you go. Because all the... So, the... So in Fire Emblem, the dragons are deities or like demigods. And then you have the dragon kin, which are the weaverns, the drakes, whatnot. And then you have something called Manakeets or Manakeets. And they are dragons who can assume who assume a human form and can shift back and forth. But if they overuse the ability, they will be stuck as one or the other. More often than not, they just revert back to the dragon form and go crazy. So kind of a similar vibe to 14. <laughs> Kind of, yeah. The, the only difference is that dragons actually come from a different dimension rather than just space. And the longer they're out of that dimension, the higher chance they have of going crazy unless they have well, a dragon stone, which again, will break with overuse. Well, the dimension thing might be pertinent too. <laughs> ah, see. But, uh, boy big. Um, yeah, so dragons are straight up DD. Dragon Ball Z was the one I think. Uh, Shenron is the only notable dragon. He is a god, obviously. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Um, and obviously... to my boy, Purunga. That's true, Purunga. That's true. Um, and obviously, uh, that particular example where the dragons are the gods is maybe not uh, where did the dragons go, per se, and is more of like, why aren't there a lot of dragons? And it's, it's because they're gods. <laughs> Category one of where all the dragons go really just means there are a smaller number of them and they are more important. That's kind of where that comes from. Uh, our category two subcategory breakdown, uh, category two. Oh God, why are there so many dragons? Um, a, a classic category two example is, is dragons are just like they're animals and they can be studied like animals. They're plentiful and they're interesting in kind of like a fantasy sciencey kind of way. Uh, this is basically Skyrim. There's dragons everywhere and you can essentially research them and understand them the way you would like deer or something. Uh, another one is dragons were deities, uh, but they've spread out and become much more ubiquitous. And now there's basically mortal versions that sort of came from the deities. Uh, this is basically World of Warcraft. The dragon the, there was the dragon flights or sorry, sorry, there was the dragon aspects, which were the five main uh, head dragons who were all way, way back in the day, proto drakes. And they went to war with uh, Garuga Gamiga Miga Garagalox. I, I cannot remember the giant dragon's name, but he has a big, long name. <laughs> you you were real close to doing the G- Garuga mesh. You know that, right? I, I, I didn't. I did not mean to. Um <laughs> Point being, when they were proto drakes, they went to war. They killed this big, scary dragon, and then they turned into like the dragon aspects turned into proper, true dragons. 
And then basically the dragon aspects had a shitload of children. So now there'd be dragons everywhere. <laughs> uh, and wow, kind of sort of makes the distinction thing that 14 does a little bit, but not as much. They tend to be a little more like, yes, many dragons. Um, and then another one, and Isaiah, you'll appreciate this. Uh, dragons are animals, and they are animals that are deeply intrinsic to society, like livestock, pets, war mounts. Uh, this is how to train your dragon. Where not only are the dragons everywhere, they also use them for a whole bunch of things in life. Yes. Uh, to the point where they're almost not they're just treated like like you would own a cat. You just have your pet dragon and your pet dog, you know, like they're just all over the damn place. So those are those are kind of our those are just a couple of examples I cooked up. I'm sure you could play and people can think of others. Uh, but the point being is that they they fall into our two our two main categories. Um, this is not totally related, but a thing that I also just thought was kind of funny is that the idea of the two broad categories, even though it's kind of a joke, you can actually apply it to a lot of other settings, too. Uh, because as a great example, uh, in Mass Effect, the dragons, which is where did all the dragons go, uh, are, are the Protheans. The Protheans are the dragons. And in Star Wars, the dragons, quote unquote, are the Jedi. <laughs> Uh, both of those. So I, yeah, I, I saw that on your thing. I, this is semantics. I absolutely, and I'm not trying to uh, derail oh boy, or like, prove your point. Here we go. Uh -huh. uh, pause, 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 pause. Uh huh. You can make a very solid argument that the, uh, that the dragons are not in fact the Jedi. Jedi are paladins, but the dragons are the force entities that used to be everywhere that are no longer anywhere. Like the mother, father, the, the yeah, the the brother, the sister, the father, and then the Bendu, whatever the fuck that guy, that deer thing is. Uh, here's what I'll say. That I would say is a more accurate. That's probably true nowadays. But if you think about the original, like if you go yes, back the, to when the Star Wars series, was first yes, conceived, agree. the idea yeah. is that the Jedi, because. You know, the, the joke being where all the dragons go, really what what the, the dragons is a stand in for, like, there used to be some sort of great society that or a great thing that we lost. Right. Dragons are kind of the stand in. But it's like there used to be more magic. There used to be more this, whatever. It's like a sort of post apocalypse kind of idea. So the Jedi were that right. There used to be Jedi all over the place. Something bad happened. Now we don't have the Jedi anymore and the stories are lost. That's yes. that's what I meant with like, the, the Star Wars example. No, no, I, like I said, I, I totally agree. I just, you I can, just thought it was funny. that. Yeah, you could get deeper in the weeds on it, for sure. Um, you could also make the argument that the Protheans aren't the dragons in Mass Effect either, and that the dragons are actually the Leviathans. Oh, but yeah, true. That's an even deeper rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Because, again, the opening premise of Mass Effect is that the Protheans are the dragons. <laughs> mm. That does modify and change. But yeah, it's almost like putting a well, actually, there's a rarer thing is kind of a goofy trope that probably that. Is, so here's what I'll say. That is rare. often I will agree. That is often a goofy trope to be like, actually, there's something even more coolier and specially -er 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 -er. But I give Mass Effect the pass on that one. Only because. Mass Effect specifically as a franchise, their whole vibe was that everything Mass Effect does the opposite of Dark Souls. <laughs> Dark Souls is like everything ha doesn't necessarily have a hundred percent explanation. It could be this. It could be that. You know, there's some gaps in the history here and there. You know, this guy could have done this, could have done. That. You know, there's a lot of like there's not a hundred percent answer on purpose. Mass Effect does the opposite. Everything has a distinct, clear, and decided on answer to it. It was all thought out in a very specific manner. So the idea of answering, like, how the Protheans got the way they were and how the Reapers came about, the idea of, like, answering that question fits with how the series handled its lore. So I kind of give them a pass. You know what I mean? Yes. No, I, yeah, I totally get it. Actually, interestingly, 
Dark Souls is another fascinating use of dragons because they actually did use dragons. I, Except I mean, they, they told uh, yeah. you where those I mean, dragons Dark went. Souls... Yes, but I would say Dark <laughs> Souls is definitely an example of where all the dragons go. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, yeah. Like, one other one of things like, where did the dragons go? Oh, genocide. No, it was yeah, absolutely the, 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 genocide. They were genocide. They got, they were just good old fashioned genocide. And that's what happened to those dragons. And they're just yeah. like, oh, oh, why were they? Did they like do anything wrong? No, no, actually, no. It, it was really just when being like, Fuck them, I want your shit. I'm taking it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so with all that in mind, uh, the, the point of that was to point out there's all sorts of types of style and like mythology you can build up around dragons. And the thing that's really fun about tabletop is you know, it's tabletop, so you can do it at your leisure yourself and come oh up my with your God, own. Wins a Nazi. All right, well, let's not go down that train of thought. <laughs> um, hit me like a grand grenade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I just yeah uh, yeah. Oh my God! I that was that was my version of an emergent moment. Yes. Yes. It, 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 wow, good? I feel a lot less bad about killing him now. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Have you recovered from this revelation? Um, not yet, but keep going, please. I'm just <laughs> going to chuckle like an idiot while you talk. Uh, so yes, the tabletop is a fun way, uh, a fun space where you can explore all sorts of ideas about the mythology around dragons and shit. And now someone might say, but Josh... Is any of this really specifically about dragons? Like, couldn't you say this about all sorts of different creature types? Yes. But dragons are the coolest. So yeah. we're talking about them. So yes, you're right, but I don't want to hear it. Right? <laughs> right? Shush. Shush. Uh, all right, I have an important question for you. Yes. All right, gun to your head. Uh, of the two options, that is, where all the dragons go, and oh god, why are there so many dragons? Wh- which one you prefer? Uh, gun, to your, gun to your head. You have to choose one or the other. Because yeah, I know, yeah. um, I know it gets more nuancy, but you have to choose one or the other. Where do dragons go? Same. Big same. Yeah. Big same. Where all the dragons go? Yeah. Uh, as for as far as subcategories go, not quite. They are deities, but I really like the way that D and D handles them in theory, which is. They are literal forces of nature that just happen to be assholes a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like so the fact that that dragons are just sort of these ethereal beings that literally shift reality to fit their tastes and they don't even do it on purpose. They're just sort of like, you know, red dragon is somewhere for a long enough time. It turns to a volcano. Uh, Yes, this this is where we get into my, uh, my literal next question was, do you like how D&D handles dragons? dragon lore yes it is uh, the coolest i don't love it okay wait l- l- let me ask you uh-huh. do you not like it from a lore perspective or do you not like how a lot of the adventures present that lore which is not quite accurately unfortunately um this is, is I- <laughs> I know you didn't give me an option C, but I'm kind of sort of going to choose an option C here, which is that I don't like that those two things are in conflict the way that they are. I, don't, Bro, I <laughs> agree with you. Don't even get it twisted. My, I completely agree. Because as far as D&D's actual lore is, right, there are mm, probably sub 100 dragons. Right. Maybe, maybe a couple hundred dragons. Yeah. For the entire planet. Yeah. And maybe 10 of them are ancient. Yeah. Maybe 20 and 30 of them are adult. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is this is kind of the way I could summarize this is that my beef with how D&D handles dragons is that D&D wants to be where all the dragons go. But D&D often is, oh, God, why are there so many dragons? Like it really, really wants to be category one, but it often is just category two and tries to fight that at every turn. And I think that's where I have a problem with it because 
they want to say, right, like lore wise, like you said, the dragons are like in, in D&D, they are or again in Forgotten Realms. They are forces of nature. They have this like innate magical juice that just shifts the world around them. They're sort of compelled to do certain things in a way that they maybe don't even totally understand because they're somewhat deity esque or at the very least they come from they are they are the spawn of deities so they're compelled in this magical like like dragons dragons are one of the places where an alignment makes sense because the alignment of a dragon is like magically compelled upon them at birth like they can't they can't really fight that because of their their coming down from you know they hail from deities and all of that is makes them sound rare. And basically, it's the D&D dragons kind of want to be Lord of the Rings, right? Where they're great and ancient and magical and powerful. But there's so many of them and the adventures put them all over the place. And obviously, we as players use them a lot. And when they're described, they're described like animals, like they can be studied and you can't you can't be like the great you know the dragons are are ancient and mystical and powerful and like strange beings but then also we understand everything about their anatomy you know what i mean like those two things don't mesh very well <laughs> uh, yeah, you know i, I mean? don't know if that's true i don't necessarily agree with that i just i just don't uh, like that that feels conflicting like I, the idea that this creature is inherently magical and and ancient and like hard to understand but also I can tell you like exactly how its liver works. <laughs> like I don't, well, so let me ask you a you question. Know. How do you feel about how monster under treats its dragons? I don't totally remember. So uh, the, obviously they have the, the like, you know, you have the standard like Rathalos and, and Anjanath. Yeah. Those are, uh, I believe they're called wyverns. Yeah. But yeah. the elder dragons are dragons. Yes. And some of them have actual like mythological significance. Uh, like I can't remember which one it is. The the there's one of them that's when you fight it, it's like, oh no, this is actually going to signify the end of the world. Even if you beat it, the world is fucked. Like that there is no coming back. Yeah, but so they're they're sort of deity esque. Yeah, but when you kill it, it's still an organism, right? It's still alive. It has to eat and breathe and sleep and shit. So you can still in theory study them. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the thing. If you're going to make them like ancient and deity and sort of inherently magical, like I feel like you shouldn't be able to study them or at the very least, you shouldn't be able to study them the same as like, I shouldn't be able to like cut them open and do an autopsy and understand how they work. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, if you're going to say that they're this force of nature that like magically bends reality and shit around it, then when I cut it open, it should be made of fucking glitter dust and like embers, you know, <laughs> like it shouldn't have a liver. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I don't love the way Monster Hunter does it then. Like, I don't want them to be organic like an animal. I don't mind the distinction of a Rathalos versus an Elder Dragon. That I like. I, I think that concept is cool because that's what World of Warcraft does, where you have this sort of pure dragon aspects and then they're like, their children, which are more, a little more like animal esque. Um, but yeah, I don't want, I, I don't want them to be like inherent proto deity creature. But also, I know how your lungs work. <laughs> that feels well, so. Weird. Maybe you can think, you can sort of think about it like this, right? The great worms are that. Right, like the dragons have become so powerful that they are literally just made of raw elemental magic stuff. They are. So you yeah. kind of get you get both worlds. You get they are physical organisms that can be killed, have biological processes, and then you know can be autopsied until they become great worms. In which case, they hit their penultimate form and sort of shed their physical bodies to become more. Or right. Less, sure. On but your point of view, the thing about D and D that I think I don't love. With it is that there's no real distinction there so like 
great worms are dragons that got crazy old and like ascended but they they still like everything's called a dragon you know like whelp is a dragon ancient dragons a dragon great worms a dragon they don't distinct them they don't split them up in any way so i don't it still feels like conflicting a little like it still feels like mm, i just don't i feel like i want i want i guess really what it is is i want D D to sort of like pick a lane and stick to their guns and it feels like they don't stick to their guns because it feels like when they describe dragons in in you know various lore entries they're describing the sort of mythical deity category one where the dragons go ancient magic type stuff like they talk about them in that fashion but then you look at like stat blocks and lore entries to that specifically break them down and then we get into the like well no actually we can understand them they're not as esoteric as we thought like i just don't like this weird i want them to kind of stick to their guns pick a lane if they if they said like oh none of the dragons that exist currently anymore are actually true dragons and like only a great worm is like an actual true dragon then i would be like all right maybe but as far as i'm aware that's not a that's not a thing like they're all kind of the same thing. So the idea uh, he, sort of. Yeah. Until they, they, they are until they hit great work, in which case they are just a different thing. Well, and I think to be fair, I, I, I think it would, would, would be fair to classify a great worm as a different thing, right? It's not called a red great worm dragon. It's a great worm in the same way that yeah. a wyvern and an elder dragon. I guess I don't I I not I'm don't I haven't seen them make that distinction. I haven't that looked that deep into that aspect of the lore specifically. But like I don't know. It also then it also feels kind of weird that you're like like again, if you if if the if the dragons are animals until they become a great worm. So what you're telling me is that this lizard lived so goddamn long he became Jesus lizard. <laughs> you know, like that also feels a little odd. Maybe again, I don't remember even how they do it. I don't remember what the lore is, but how they hand. I, I, if I remember correctly, they just become great worms when they're really fucking old. Right. Or something like they that. They have to, uh, there. Yeah. There's that. And they have to ba- find like other iterations of themselves in the multiverse and then kill them and steal their hordes. Weird. Okay. It's also, I mean, you also you also have to think about this with D and D, right? Is all it's this isn't just dragons. All of the monsters, no matter how mystical, magical, divine, or otherwise, are studyable. Sure, yes, but I, I the the re, I, the reason I think it matters, the reason I specifically harp on like it with dragons is just because dragons are their own little special thing. Like they they are they are the exception to things. And not just in D&D, I think just in fantasy in general, like dragons are often the exception because they are they are the mythical. They are the mythological creature creature that captures imagination for like human beings across the world more than anything else. And, you know, so they they kind of have like a special spot. This is I mean, I also have a specific bias towards liking them or not bias, but I like them the most as a wee lad who grew up in the fantasy world was like yes dragon's cool um so like yeah it does apply to the other creatures but i want it i want them to feel different and i i feel like dnd waffles between the kind of two major categories in a way that doesn't feel very satisfying to me i mean that that i mean yes that, that's fair that's that's more of an opinion thing of like it, it the vibe is off. I, yeah, I, I've got no that's, real argument. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Like the vibe is off. I don't, yeah, I don't love how they kind of waffle between. I also think it, I mean, I also think the mechanics of the game are part of the problem too, where it's like, yes, the, D, the dragons are worlds are sort of like dimension bending creatures, but then their stat blocks don't really reflect that very well. You know, like you have the regional effects in the lair actions, but those can be ignored and those aren't in the stat block itself. Like none of nothing in a dragon stat block specifically, because those abilities are technically outside the stat block. Nothing in the stat block specifically implies any kind of weird ability. You know what I mean? Like 
I feel like if they have this reality bending aspect to them, I feel like they should have abilities in their stat block where it's like, you know, I don't know, you're fighting a red dragon and they have an ability called like, you know, a temperature bender that just suddenly shifts the overall atmosphere of the like and the temperature around them. And all of a sudden the area you're in turns squel- scorching hot regardless of what else is going on. Like, I feel like they should have abilities like that, and they don't intrinsically. They don't, no. And I, I look, for what it's worth, completely agree. Like, well, I think you that's, know, you, that's... You, me, and Matt said this, right? Like, or, or Matt disagreed with us, but we said it. Like, Matt did, yes. <laughs> they... <laughs> they act like big lizards, and they shouldn't. They should act yeah. like something other. Right. You know, That's, rather than like beating their wings and knocking people back, if they like, if a if a red dragon pulsed, like they did the the Godzilla atomic pulse to knock people back. Yeah, they like or, exploded in know, flame. Yeah, or they could walk through fires. Yeah, you know, if there was like massive torrents of of flame, a red dragon could just straight up walk through a turn and walk out of another one. Yeah, and then you're kind of there going, "What the fuck?" Yeah, you they know? Could, they could fire teleport. Yeah, yeah. That's, or I or, think uh, lightning dragons could literally travel through travel lightning. lightning. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be sick, actually. <laughs> yeah, and and I think that's kind of what I mean. Where it's a combination of the way that they're described in their uh, it, like the way they're described by other NPCs conflicts with how they're described in their own lore entries, and then the way that they're presented in like adventures and stuff, and mechanically feels conflicting with how they're supposed to be presented in in a narrative sense. Like they have all these weird conflicting points. And that that is that is where I get like frustrated. And I don't even really there are lots of cool like there are aspects of D&D dragons that are cool. Like I I even like the idea of evolving into a great worm. I actually don't hate that concept. Um but there's places where the two like rub up against each other and I'm like, oh, this feels weird. You know, it's like it's like that eternal <laughs> it's that eternal debate where someone goes, OK, should there be red dragons or should there be a red dragon, a white dragon, a blue dragon, a gr- and that's it. You know what I mean? Like that whole debate back and forth that people always have, like, should there only be one of each or should they be a species? Right. Because if you say there's only one of each, then you're kind of in the category one space of where all the dragons go, because you're talking about them as like more special because only one can have that color. There can only ever be one red dragon. Like, okay, now they're more special, more inherently like deity, more magical. Whereas if you say, oh, no, like red dragons are a species, then you're in the oh, God, why are there so many dragon space of they're kind of like an animal. Right. Well, so actually, let me ask you. Do you think there should only be one dragon of each color? I am. I, I, let me tell you, (laughs) this is the eternal debate in my head (laughs) (laughs) because on one hand, I think it's super sick to be like, you know, I am Rataranax the red, not like a red, the red. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I want to use dragons in my game. So I need to have a reason for there to be more dragons around. (laughs) I, I think I not that I came up with this, you know, uh, but I've settled uh, on the perfect solution for me, in which case all dragons are the avatar. There is only one of one type. And when you kill it, another one is born. A new one spawns. Mm. And so you literally cannot make them go extinct. Like if, if even if you killed, if you if you jabberwocky that bitch and found it every time it was born and killed it, it would just pop up somewhere else. They're just sort of a universal constant that can't be destroyed. I like that's kind of interesting that 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 then you take them almost into they're not even a deity. They're like an aspect of natural order. Like they yes, are, part they of are nature. a force of nature. <laughs> yeah, they literally can't <laughs> like they probably don't even understand their own nature-ness like they just are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you can't kill a hurricane. <laughs> um. I don't hate that idea. The one question there then becomes, okay, so like you kill it and then is it like reborn as a whelp? And then if it's reborn as a whelp, you can't like, how do you use it again? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, that's why you have one of each type, right? Like you kill, you know, 
uh, 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 Kordak, the Ember Lord. And then it comes back as Mordak, the Inferno King. Yeah. And, you know, and like, <laughs> it, I don't even think it necessarily has to remember all the shit that you did to it. Although that'd be really funny. Of like, that would yeah, be I know that you stabbed me in the balls, you dick. If they can tap into their past do. lives. Yeah. I, although I, I do like the idea of, you know, let, 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 the, the older a dragon got in its previous life, the stronger it becomes in its next life. That would be it. Yeah, that's an interesting. But it one. stacks. It doesn't like. It's a stacking buff. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. So if if if, if a dragon got to Great Worm and then it died, congrats. That whelp is gonna be amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of an interesting idea. Well, that kind of answers the next question, being there of, uh, uh, how do you handle dragons in your game? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. I don't. <laughs> Right, that's true. I guess the, the, the option hasn't totally presented itself recently, huh? It has not, no. Um, but I have handled similar things, right? The final boss of my campaign was a giant bird made of lightning, and I totally used the, the brass, whatever the lightning metallic dragon stat block was. Bronze. Um, bronze, yeah. And I, I did both. I had category one and category two because... It's category one in which there's only one of them. And, you know, it's super rare and people think of it like a mythological creature. But it's also category two because there's a bunch of them in the other dimension where all the crazy shit comes from. Because that's also like, you know, its own planet. So there's a bunch of shit over there that's crazy and awful and terrible. But right. it's but really the, difficult for something that big to get through a portal. The world your our players world. interacted with was category run one where all the dragons go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, makes sense. I, it's funny. I, I, I said I like the category one thing more, but I actually didn't do it for my m most recent game as much. Oh, yeah. Well, no, that's true. Actually, I did do it. Never mind. I totally take that back. No, I did do it because the dragons were all basically gone, but they were, you know, like after, you know, pre exonitus times they were gone but uh it was just more recent but like you know they were basically non-existent dragonborn were also gone <laughs> mm -hmm. um i don't think we ever found out why that was dragonborn yeah i don't remember if i had a very precise reason other than the fact that where all the dragons go <laughs> ah and they kind of went with them, I think, was really what my logic was on that. Gotcha. Yeah, because, like, dragons were sort of a lost thing. Hence why you only ever saw one. or no. Technically, you saw two, but the other one was a Draco Lich. So, you know, dead. <laughs> mm. Um. Oh, yeah. no, wait, wait. We saw the red dragon. We saved. The blue Draco Lich, we killed. And then yeah. there's the one that fucking um Oh the Orca gem summoned. One. Yeah. Yes. That's true. Uh oh well the one that Orca summoned was also dead. That was a ghost. <laughs> oh. Yes. Um but there was that's true, there was um there was Cowgross, uh the black psyche, but the implication I mean, we didn't not that we got into the noodly weeds on that one, but like I had this idea that gem dragonborns are almost like fake dragons. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, interesting. Like they're like manufactured. Hmm. So, I actually yeah. don't even know what the lore for them is. For I don't know what their official lore is. Yeah, I don't know. I do not remember. Um, it might be a, if someone knows this. I, I'm going to ask Matt actually. Red Fizzbands, um, because you know, uh, uh, whatever the Asgarath or Eo, depending on who you ask, uh, you know, the great dragon yeah. uh, splitting into Tiamat and Bahamut. And then they had their own dragons. So where the gem dragons come from? True. And are they real dragons? I don't know. Because they did not come from Asgarath slash EO, I get. It's too late to be looking this up because we're an hour and a half into the podcast. Yeah, no, no, don't here. I'm looking it up right now. I mean, I, I, I don't know that you're going to get a quick answer on that one. Um, although the question also becomes, what about the space dragons? <laughs> also like the, true. Like the time and the solar dragon. And my boys, the astral. Yeah. Dude, the solar dragon's so cool. 
Yeah. It's it literally has the the Godzilla atomic breath. It shoots a beam. That beam hits something. So like it, it'll go through all targets like an actual like a standard beam will. And then it hits its intended target and then it detonates. That is can, so fucking can, can cool. Can y'all tell is it? <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah has a preference. <laughs> the closer my dragons are to Godzilla, the happier I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm aware. I also like the idea that the solar dragon is just born out of a sun. Yeah, that's a good one. Wild. Um, or a star, sorry, born out of a star. Um, they're not suns. Our star is named the sun. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yeah. So we kind of yeah. So that's how you're dealing with. It. So if you were to do a big overhaul, like you were handed the golden keys to D and D, what would you do with them? Uh, wait. Uh, hold on. Repeat the question. If you were handed the golden keys and they said Isaiah, you can do whatever you want with D and D, you were to do a big overhaul on dragons, what would you do with them? You could rework them however you want. Uh, so I would put I would make Asgrath slash EO more important because it's just sort of this piece of this little tidbit of forgotten lore I feel when it's in my opinion the most interesting thing that like the great neutral dragon was destroyed to make good and evil uh -huh. and we don't have neutral dragons as far as I'm aware we do. Um, I want that to be more of a thing I want to do the whole there's only one of each type and then they die and are reborn uh you would make that official? Yeah, get I don't get uh, get rid of the multiverse aspect for great worms. Just make it their final form. Um, yeah, and that. change their stat block to better reflect the fact that they are walking forces of nature. Okay. And yeah, I uh, people will be like, oh, you know, chromatics always being evil, metallics always being good. I. Don't hate that, actually. Um, and I, for me, I think you can have a red dragon that helps people. It doesn't have to just always be an awful tyrant. I think the big thing is that you just play with evil the way that D&D &D uses the word evil, which is all of its actions are inherently self-centered. You can just sort of play with that in an interesting way, you know? Yeah, I mean, I... I man, I go back and forth on the, 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 the idea of... Them, them being all sort of all chromatics are evil and all metallics are good because like I said I, I the the lore that they're like their magicalness is what makes them inherently set to a specific alignment I do think is kind of an interesting idea if you're going for the angle of you know where all the dragons go um but it does feel weird also to say that like this hyper intelligent hyper capable ancient being like can't break the rules you know so i go back and forth on that one like it feels weird sometimes but again if you treat alignment as like a a fact of reality and not necessarily your actual like it's less about a morality and more about this weird fact of the D, &D reality then it kind of works better because they're bound to the reality that they like come from. So I go back and yeah, forth on and that one. I have no, <laughs> I have no clear answer. That's pretty much universally how I, how I see it and how I treat it. And I get a little frustrated when people get upset at your, that you just sort of treat the game the way the game states that it is treated. Well, yeah, I think alignment originally, well, alignment originally was almost like a religious thing. It like still it was, is. Yeah. It was like a belief system kind of thing that was tied into like just this is how the world functions type concept so to, you know to be fair to Matt like the whole thing with drow being all evil is is yes they are raised evil but they are also actively being fucked with by their deity who hates everything you know yeah she like makes them evil intrinsically yeah, and, and that's why they're very specific like they are predisposed to it when they're born in Menzo Baranzin because Lolf has their claw, you know, her claws in them. Yeah. Raise them outside of that, away from Lolf's power, they're just normal people. There's evil juice in the water. 
Yes. There's literally demons in the blood. You should do cocaine about yes. it. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. You got demons in your blood. <laughs> um, I think if I were to overhaul them, I would just, I mean, I would really commit to one or the other and really nail down, you know, the idea of, are they like ancient primordial things like ancient primordial creatures or are they like bio animals that have like insane magical power. Um, I would try to nail and, and I'm not necessarily committed to one or the other, but I would try to decide a little more firmly. Um, and I would, I would, I, yeah, I think I probably would like, you know what, you know what I kind of dislike actually, especially about D and D dragons. I kind of hmm. hate that we know their age ranges <laughs> Like, I kind of hate that we know when they go from, like, whelp to adult to whatever, or whelp to young to adult to ancient. Like, I almost don't want to know that, (laughs) you know? Like, I almost kind of want the idea that they're just born, like, either they're just born an adult or they could age at different rates depending. Like, maybe one's born and it's like a whelpling and then it ages really, really fast because it's like it's a red dragon born. It's a red dragon that was born in the pit of a volcano. And that like super ages. you know what I mean? Like, I don't like the idea that they have like a biological stages of life. Well, so fun fact, um, that is sort of a thing. Their age is also somewhat dependent on the size of their horde. See, I, like I, having I, a bigger horde literally changes them. Right. See, again, so th- this is what I mean. This is what I mean, where the two ideas conflict against each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay see yeah there you go um I suppose you can sort of treat it like an either or right they will naturally age at roughly these intervals but can uh, speed yeah, run feels, it by killing everything and taking everything that just feels weird I don't know feels weird to either or it like I want I don't know I want I kind of want like a committed thing cause you know it, it's like yeah, again, I don't I don't dis I don't even really hate one over the other. Like I think both have their merits. I mean, one of my favorite series, one of my favorite series is the Aragon books or the Inheritance Cycle for the cultured out there. Um and that is literally dragons as animals, right? Like dragons are just they're born out of an egg, they grow up, they grow pretty fast. They they grow fast like a dog grows fast, right? Like, you know, dogs grow in 2 years, dragon grows a couple years, whatever. Um But like they're animals, you could raise and treat them as such. You could train them. They get smarter. They're smarter than something like a dog. But when they're little, you're effectively training them like a dog. And then, you know, they learn how to like fly better and use their like a big point of the books is Safira. uh, Safira doesn't know how to use her her fire breath at first because she's a little baby, (laughs) you know, and then she figures out how to do it in the same way that like, a you know, a kitten learns how to hunt or whatever. Um, and there are a shitload of dragons. The only reason the dragons aren't around in the inheritance cycle is because they were all killed. But then Aragon fi- spoilers, Aragon finds a bunch of ancient dragon eggs and is going to like bring them back in the way that you would like bring back to an extinct species. Um, so that is all very much dragons as animals. And I'm cool with that. Uh, but Aragon doesn't ever try to make them any kind of like hyper beyond reality type being. They do a little bit when they die, because when a dragon dies, it turns into this little like egg thing that still has its consciousness. So the dragon can still like use magic and and talk to you and stuff from the little egg thing. But they're not like they don't like ascend to godhood on death or anything like that, or they don't like turn into some sort of magical juice or anything. You know what I mean? They're not primordial forces of nature, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's like giving them. So in that, in, basically what I, point being in the inheritance cycle, giving them biological age ranges, I get like that makes sense. But yeah, for the D and D dragons, that feels weird. I guess, I guess that's really the main thing I would want to change with D and D dragons. Is I really want to be like, all right, what, what what are we committing to? What's the plan here? Are they super rare and super magical or are they like around a decent amount? And are they like big fly lizard things with magic powers? You know, let's really just go. Yeah. I mean, the actual, 
The actual D&D answer is yes, they are very rare. Uh, but adventurers get to do all the cool stuff. Yeah, they're very rare, but also they're in like every adventure. <laughs> and you're like, all right, well, yes, yeah, they're not because, that rare. You know, the adventurers have to do cool shit. I no, I know. Really I get it. It, it. it is. It is. A, yeah, it is one of those conflicting things. It's 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 a it's a difficult square circle to square, which is why I think it would be easier to just say they are more ubiquitous. And so ergo adventures run into them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because D and at the end of the day, D and D dragons do pull primarily from Lord of the Rings back in the day. Like that's where a lot of this is pulling from. So that's why initially they were more Lord of the Rings esque. Hmm. But yeah, I feel like that's shifted quite a bit now. Uh, last, last little one. So we've only heard about like visual redesigns for the dragons in Five E so far. We haven't heard anything about any specific mechanical changes. Any big mechanical things you would want to change? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we said earlier, right? Make that whole inherent shift magic reality juice. thing more relevant give them more abilities that aren't just how to hit you uh, and, and they're fire, sort and of doing breath. it right yeah they're sort of doing it right because you know the dragons have two different breaths now or they have the like cool uh astral energy lance things that they summon like they, they're they're getting there that we're slowly moving in that direction um True. but more Put more into that, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, just make them spellcasters. Yeah, I was thinking that. Like, I, I think uh, make them spellcasters, but I also kind of want them to have their own special spellcasting. Like, like they pull from the magic of reality. So you can't, like, for example, can't, like, counterspell the dragon or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, I want them to have their own sort of special spells on top I, of I, I mean just I would casting. say give them special spells still let you counter spell them because if you can't counter spell I mean, them then the wizards just, are going to explode I know that's I know just you're, one, yeah, that's one yeah. example that's one example I know also the wizards have other ways to deal with the problem they, they, they'll be fine without their fucking counter spell <laughs> also the counter spell doesn't save them from the breath weapon anyway they're still going to explode true but if you force cage them and then and they're just fucked. I mean, that uh, a dragon casting force cage on anyone is hilarious. Yes. Love that. I love force cage. It is one of my favorite spells. Just the idea of the dragon being so because like the dragon doesn't really need to use force cage. So if they did use force cage, that's a fucking petty maneuver. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah. I also like mm, I'm trying to think if there's any other like mechanical things that I feel like I would want to mess around with. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to I'd probably have to think about a little more deeply. But yeah, as a as a general sense, that kind of that whole throw in that reality bending stuff more, throw in the layer stuff more. Oh, I'll give you a and simple like, one. Bigger. Oh, bigger? I mean, I want them to be huge. I mean, Enormous. They, they can be technically whatever size you want. I mean, you say that, but they have straight up sizes we know how big an um, ancient red dragon is. the great worms are perfect that one shot of the great worm that's bigger than a city perfect i mean do i don't we have want like, them all to be that big but yeah that that thing's massive i don't think we have exact dimensions on them like i know do, they're yeah. i know they're mechanically gargantuan obviously but like mechanically gargantuan doesn't mean that much because you could go beyond the normal gargantuan size but I don't remember seeing dimensions for them. It's uh, it's in the Draconomicon. Oh, from third edition. I mean, yeah, I yes, but I don't really see why they would change their size. Right. They still take sure. up the same amount of blocks. They still do all that. I guess. Yeah. But most people still treat a lot of the Draconomicon lore as like confirmed canon. I mean, and I think one of the reasons why we haven't gotten a new Draconomicon and Fizzbands is not a Draconomicon, as I think Wizards understands and knows that. I mean, it, I, I think it's worth pointing out that people can treat it as confirmed canon, but it isn't actually confirmed canon because every edition rewrites the like universe. It does, but what I'm saying is, is Wizards has not disproven any of that. 
So until we have, you know, more up-to-date information, <laughs> I see no reason to not they, take that as canon. They haven't told me it doesn't exist, so I'm going to assume it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I that's mean, a good rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah, if it was right, yeah, confer- sure. it was official right, works, at one point, guess, and they well. haven't said it's not anymore. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> All right. All right. This has been our TED Talk on dragons. Everybody go, uh, I don't know, read stuff with dragons in it. Dragon's cool. Yeah. Go play dragon's dog. I I guess. I still have to play that. That being said, I do think Dragon's dogma, by the way, where all all the dragons go. Where all the dragons go, yeah. You. Yeah, you. You are the dragon. (laughs) Um, I just think it's funny that Wizards, uh, that Wizards of the Coast has an official magic card for Godzilla. Why no 5e nice. stat block, Wizards? What the fuck? Just because it's in magic doesn't mean it's going to get a stat block. It should. It, sh- it, it's, it is the boy. I mean... It is the quintessential giant... Ro- giant mo- gi- sorry, giant fire-breathing lizard. Giant nuclear-breathing lizard? Yes. Plasma-breathing? It's not really fire, right? It's nuclear fire. Fire is plasma. I guess. I don't know. Let's, we don't need to get biology of guns. <laughs> I don't think we need to go down that rabbit hole right now. True. But still, let's put him in. I, 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 I know. I know. That or give the fucking Tarask a breath weapon. I, I we need to know, have one of these. <laughs> I will accept I, either or. I do feel like the Tarask needs some sort of range something. It is a little silly. The Tarask has no ranged option at all. Yeah. That is a little, uh, little questionable. Little questionable. Anyway, this has been us. It's had this. Yes, this has been a, yeah, whatever. English is a language. If you enjoy this tomfoolery, follow us on Twitter to keep up to date. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Please, I beg of you. Help me pay the bills. Not actually, though. Don't worry, I'm fine. Say <laughs> again, All right, peace, motherfuckers. We out. <laughs> I, I, sure.